In the 17 and 1800s, blood transfusions were performed. However, they were almost always fatal. This is because blood types were yet to be discovered. Blood types were finally discovered in 1901. Carl Landsteiner was the first to discover blood types. He discovered types A, B, and O in a series of experiments in 1901, earning him the Nobel Prize. Two years later, after further testing, Landsteiner discovered type AB. Type A positive and O positive are the most common types of blood in the United States, making up approximately 72% of the population under these two types. AB negative is the rarest blood type in the United States, making up only 1% of the population. An individual's blood type is inherited from both parents. The ABO blood typing system we know is controlled by a single gene on the chromosome number 9. This particular gene has three different allele possibilities. Alleles A and B are codominant, while allele for O is recessive. Similarly, the RH factor is also controlled by a single gene, but with only two possible alleles, positive for the RH factor or negative for the RH antigen. Much of today's medical care depends on the steady supply of blood from healthy donors. Millions of accident victims, cancer patients, hemophiliacs, and surgery patients receive blood transfusions every day. In fact, 4.5 million Americans need a blood transfusion each year, and someone in the world needs blood every two seconds, which is why advances in blood safety are so important. In order for this process to work, the agglutinogens on the surface of the donor's blood corresponding to their blood type must match the antagglutinogens on the surface of the recipient's blood. If foreign blood of a different blood type is introduced to a human, the patient's antibodies may react with the antigens on the surface of the donor's blood. This will lead to agglutination of the blood and possible death in the patient. Agglutinated blood will not be able to carry oxygen or nutrients to the cells or carry waste and CO2 away from the cells, and the reaction will cause cracking of red blood cells inside the patient. When a red blood cell cracks open, hemoglobin leaks into the body cavity, causing toxic reactions and usually results in fatality. Agglutination is the number one reason why blood transfusions were so unsuccessful in the 18th and 19th centuries. Luckily, significant advances have been reached in blood safety over the past century, most importantly in the past 20 years. Currently, the most severe risk during blood transfusion is an administrative error, showing just how far we have come today.